Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Maverick's server and we're going to talk this week about the concept of port forwarding. Now, uh, port forwarding is uh, how you access your, your different services and things from the internet. And so to help you get a handle on this, let me just pull up uh, the airport utility here for a minute and just uh, give you a kind of a visual representation. Uh, as you can see in this graphic here, I've got my router uh, right here, and we've got the Internet, okay? And this is, this is how I connect uh, to the Internet. Uh, the router, the modem is actually connected to the router. And so the outside traffic comes in through your cable company or through your DSL provider or however you're getting service. And then your router then uh, t takes that information and it, uh, it takes care of the different computers and things inside your network. And so the router uh, is responsible for uh, you know, addressing things uh, through DHCP so that each of your devices has an address. Uh, it's also responsible for what comes in and out of your network. And so it or acts as a, a physical firewall or kind of a hardware fire, firewall uh, to keep things you don't want in out and to let in things that you do want in in. Okay, and that kind of goes back and forth. Now the aspects of how it goes in and out is called a port. And uh, the port is just basically a tunnel through this physical firewall here uh, in and out of the Internet. And so port forwarding is basically just saying, hey, uh, well, for this particular service, I need to make sure that if anybody tries to come in for file sharing, for instance, that you forward uh, that information through this particular port so that the router can route it uh, to the proper service. Uh, and back again, it does the same thing in reverse going out uh, to the Internet as well. And so your router kind of handles all that traffic and that information. Now, if you uh, are if you have a server that's sitting front facing on the internet, in other words, maybe you have it in a hosted environment uh, or something like that, or you're just connecting it directly to the internet, and your uh, server is handling all the traffic, then you won't have a router as a physical firewall. And in most cases, uh, your ports will all be open to the world uh, for things that you don't even want open. And so, instead of port forwarding. Uh, in the sense of, you know, opening and closing ports, you're going to actually be closing ports only uh, through a firewall, usually a software firewall. Uh, in some cases, you might have a, a hardware switch in between, but uh, usually a software firewall is used to then close all the ports and only open the ones that you want open. So you would do it through software as opposed to doing it through your router. So that gives you just kind of a basic idea of how port forwarding works and, uh, and why it's important. Uh, it's a security measure, uh, but it also gives you access when you want it to the services that you want. So let me just uh, pop this down for a minute. Uh, within server, there is uh, built in a service uh, that will automatically interface with your Apple router and open and close ports. And so if you haven't uh, purchased a router yet, I would recommend purchasing an Apple uh, Extreme base station uh, because server can control uh, the ports on that router and it just makes port forwarding very easy because you don't have to think about it. So if you do have an Apple router you will see it show up here on the side. You can see I've got this one that says office and when I click on it you can see I have this service here where it's going to where it asks for uh, my password for it to control it. Right. So if you want server to control your router you do that. Now if you don't have an Apple router then you're going to have to uh, open and close ports yourself through your router's interface. And so based on whatever your router's model is, you want to look up what the uh, interface screen is for settings and how they handle port forwarding. And you'll have to just manually open those ports as you open services. The same thing is true if you're using a uh, software firewall because your server's front facing. Uh, you will have to uh, close ports yourself through that firewall interface. All right, so let me just put in my password here to show you how this works with an Apple router attached. Okay, so I'll click Manage because I want it to manage my router. And so now you can see that it's managing my router. Now you'll notice I have all of these different services already set here, and that's because it's reading my router. And these are things that I've already opened uh, on the router previously. And I left those on there so you could just kind of see what they look like. Uh, now, uh, each of these represents uh, particular ports. And so let me just show you. If I was to click a plus button here, what I could do is add uh, different services that I want to have ports open for. And so if I just would click on uh, DNS, for instance, and click Add, then it would add DNS to this list down here. And it would automatically open the ports on your router. The beauty of uh, this built-in integration is that it will open the ports on your Airport Extreme uh, base station without having to restart the router. 
uh, which is really nice. So as soon as you uh, add the service, it automatically opens the uh, ports. And so it does save you a lot of time. Uh, I can also, uh, let me see, I just added that service. So it's going to apply the settings. Let me just show you what it looks like. And so now it has added the DNS service in there. Uh, if I don't want that on there and I want to get rid of it, I can simply just uh, click the minus and it's applying the settings and now it's removing it. Uh, and so it's basically written, the, written that to the router and then taken it off again. Uh, and done that, uh, done that automatically. Uh, if I just click the plus again, you also have the option of adding uh, your own services. And so you can put in what the service name is and what the port is. So if you've got certain software that requires a certain port uh, for you to have it entered in, uh, you can add that service and put the port down and it will open that port or that uh, hole, so to speak, in your router so that communications for that service can go back and forth. So it makes it very, very simple in doing this. Uh, let me show you what it looks like on the router. Uh, one more thing you're probably wondering, the settings that requiring uh, name and password over Wi-Fi. Uh, this is for a radius. Uh, this is if you want uh, uh, people to have to log in with their open directory credentials, uh, what you set up when we talk about uh, users and groups, that instead of using uh, an SSID and a password uh, to log into your network, they would instead use their login that they would use for the server. And so I'm going to cover that uh, in another screencast in depth, but I just wanted to mention that in case you were wondering what that was. Uh, so let's look at, uh, let's go back to the airport utility, and let me just show you what happens on the router uh, when you uh, actually make those uh, make those changes. And so let's go over here to network. So all the port settings are right in here. And if you remember in the previous screencast, I talked about this, uh, that NAT is the port forwarding protocol. And these are the port settings for that NAT service right here. And you can see that I've got a description now of all of those same things. If I just come over here, let me just move this over. All of the things that I have open here are open over here. You can see there's calendar, there's contacts, file sharing. All of those ports are actually written in here into the uh, router's uh, records. Let me just put this over so that all of that information is there. And if you want to look at it, for instance, here's a VPN. We'll click Edit. And you can see that uh, VPN has these certain ports open on uh, UDP and TCP for my private IP address, which is my server's address. That's the one that's in there. And so it's got your public and your private ports. And these are these are the ports that you would open uh, for VPN. So if you're doing this manually, you would have to make note of these ports, go into your software, add all of these ports in there, restart your router, and then those ports will be open uh, for that service to reach the internet and back. And so you can see how convenient it is to not to have to come in and remember the right numbers and put them in, but to have the server app do it itself. Uh, but that's what that looks like. And so you could even come into your router and add the ports yourself just by clicking a plus button here. If I just click this, put in a description of whatever service you're using, you can see it has various services here available. And then you would add your ports in here and put in what, what address they were at. I'm just going to cancel that. I just wanted to show you how that works. So you can see it makes it a, a lot simpler for you to access that and uh, really does uh, automate the process uh, to make those things uh, work, work for you. Let me just cancel this, and I'm just going to put this down here. So that gives you an idea of how port forwarding works. Uh, again, it's, uh, it's essential if you're going to access your services on the outside. For those of you with a dot .private address, you would be accessing it with VPN. So really, the only port you would have open, uh, besides maybe screen sharing if you wanted to use that, or uh, you know remote management of your server, is you would uh, the only port you would open would be the one for VPN, and then you would VPN in, so it would look like you're on your network and use those services. Uh, if you got dot .local, this doesn't mean anything to you because you're not trying to access services services outside your local network. But for those with .private or one of the other uh, registered domains like .com, .net, .org, uh, port forwarding is something that you, that you will have to uh, understand and get a handle on if you want to access your services outside your network. So that's all I have for this week on port forwarding. Uh, I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.